Hi, welcome to my channel. Do you want to improve performance of your power automate flow? And if answer is yes, then today we are going to learn how we can improve the performance of power automate flow using SharePoint batch rest endpoint. If you want to learn how you can do this, stay tuned. To explain how SharePoint Batch can help improving the performance of your flow, let's take an example. So let's say I have a requirement where I have to create SharePoint list item from Excel using flow. So generally what we will do, we will go to our flow, right? We will connect to the Excel like I'm doing here. And then we will go through each row in this Excel and use SharePoint create item action, providing all this different column information to create whatever number of items are available in this Excel. Okay, this is the classic approach that we generally do. So let's try to run this flow and see how much time it is taking to create 1000 records in SharePoint list. The flow completed and it took six minutes. Okay, it took six minutes to create 1000 list item. And you can see there are 1000 items got created. Now, let's try to understand what actually happened behind the scene. So we had a flow in which we start creating a request to create item in the SharePoint. And we send the request with all the information that required to create item. And then flow was waiting for SharePoint to receive the request, process that request and send the response back so that we can process the response as needed. Now, this was the one request for one item. But if you remember, in our case, we sent 1000 item creation request. So flow did something like this, what you are seeing on the screen. So it created 1000 create item request to SharePoint and was waiting for each individual response. And result of that, was slow performance because it took six minutes because it was keep sending those requests and then waiting for each response. So how we can avoid those 1000 separate requests going to the SharePoint instead sending just one request with all these different item information in it. And that's where the SharePoint batch is useful. So batch allow you to send multiple requests that can be to create item, to delete item, to create file, any SharePoint operation that you like to perform in one single batch. So you create that one batch of multiple requests. Okay. The next, what you need to understand is the chain set. Chain set is nothing but your different request that you are sending to the SharePoint. And you can have up to 1000 chain set under a single batch request. So you can define these unique chain set total 1000 in one request. But under each chain set, you can have up to 1000 requests. So for example, in our case, we were sending those 1000 create item requests. They can all fall under one single chain set. They can define something like this. So as you can see here, I'm saying my chain set unique ID is this. This is for the first create item. This is for the second create item, but the unique ID is similar. And this is for my 1000 item. And once you define all of these different requests, you close your chain set and then you close your batch and this will become your request. So instead of one request for one item, what batching is allowing you to do is allowing you to combine multiple requests together and send as a single request. Your flow will look like this. So instead of sending the create item request, now I'm sending a batch request. Our request is going to look like this. It's gonna have batch start, all the different item information under the chain set and then ending the batch and sending the request. The flow will wait for that request to receive by SharePoint. SharePoint will process all those requests and send the response back to the flow. So now let me show you how you can create a flow that will create a batch request, something like this, what you are seeing on this screen and do the similar operation that we did previously, creating 1000 list item. 
Okay, so before we start creating the flow, let's understand how the batch request looks like. It is start with batch unique ID. So you need to define a unique ID for this batch. And then next you define the content type. It is going to be multi-part mixed. Then you need to set the boundary. And in this, what you pass, you pass the unique ID for the chain set. The next you will define the content type transfer encoding that is binary. And this top part is the header for this batch request. Okay. The next you define your actual chain set request with the item information in it. So you will add your chain set unique ID. Then you will also define the content type for this request. It is application HTTP and the transfer encoding is binary. So this is the header for these individual requests that we will be creating. Then your actual SharePoint REST API call that you are making to create item. So this is for create item as you can see here. Okay. And this whole section is your request one. Then you just repeat the same information again and again for each different item. So as you can see here, this is my second request. And now this time my data has changed. Nothing changed from the top part here. So if I have to create the third item, then only thing what I'm going to do, I'm going to create the similar information and then change the information here. Okay, so this this is how you create this request. How are we going to create this request in flow? I will walk you through and just to close this request, you close the chain set and you close the batch and that become your batch request, right? So if you clear with that, let me go back to the flow. I'll start creating an empty flow. And first thing that we need, we need to define a array. And what this array variable is going to use for, it is going to use to store that entire batch request. The next step we will do, we will create a compose action. Okay. And in this, we are going to create the batch underscore unique ID. So for I will use the queued function that, that's going to give me that unique ID. So this is my batch ID. Next, I will add another compose action. This is for my chain set unique ID. So I will use the very similar concept as we use in batch ID. So chain set underscore quit. The next thing that we need to do is we need to set up the header. So if you remember this header. So to do that, I'm going to use the, another compose action here and we will call it header. So my header is going to look like this. Dash dash output of my batch ID, content type multi-part mixed, boundary is my chain set ID. The next, we will add this header or append this header to our array variable. Okay, so we're gonna use append to array, select the array, and then select selecting the output of the header. Now the next step that we're gonna do, we're gonna connect to the Excel to get those rows for which we are going to create these different items. So I connect it to the Excel that has the data for which I'm going to create those different list items. Now next what we need to do, we need to define our chain set header and the actual request to item, right? So we are going to create this action for each row in the Excel. So I'm starting with compose and in which what I'm going to do first I'm going to start with double dash and then in this case if you remember I need to pass my chain set ID right press enter the next that I'm going to do I'm going to copy those content type in the next copy that information here so as you can see here so I have defined my top part my actual request URL and then metadata is here and then I'm going to connect this to Excel. So my title is my first name. And as soon as you do that, flow is automatically going to add the apply to each. And then we will update the rest of the item. So now I updated all these columns information coming from Excel. And just to recap, so we added our chain set ID on the top, content type, content transfer encoding, method, our URL for the get items, content type, for this request and the metadata. And then after this compose, we need to add this request 
to the array. So we will append this to our array. So what we are doing in this apply to each, we are going through each row in this Excel, creating our chain set request for each item and appending that to the given array. The next, what we need to do, we need to close the chain set and we need to close the batch. And we will just add those two variable here. So dash dash, this is my chain set ID and this is my batch ID. So now if you see from top to down, we created the header, we created all the different chain set requests and we close the request. As we know, we are appending all of this information to an array. An array is not going to be presented like this, what we needed. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use another compose action. And this time what we're gonna do, we're gonna use a function called join. And what this function is going to allow us, it's gonna allow us to join every element or every item in this array by a given uh, delimiter. So in our case, we're gonna join the array item by a new line character. In this step, we are going to connect all of those different array item as a single list with the new line character. So we will get the output like this, and that's what we need. And once you have all of this done, then the last step that we need to do, now we are making a call to the SharePoint to create the item. And what we're gonna use, we're gonna use the send an HTTP request to SharePoint. So select that, select the site address, and remember always, because we are using the batch endpoint, the request method will be always post. And the URI is going to be underscore API slash dollar batch. So this is going to be your endpoint for the batch. And the next thing that you need to define, you need to define the content type for this batch request. So my header content type equals to multipart mixed and the boundary equals to batch ID. And the body is output of the join function that we just created. So this is the flow that we can use to create all these 1000 items using the batch commands. And let's run it. Okay, so the flow completed. As you can see here, it took around two minutes. So let me go back. Yes, it took two minutes, 17 seconds. And if I compare this one, this is the quick comparison between the left-hand side flow that was the classic approach of going through each and every item in the Excel and calling the create item versus using the batch. And as you can see here, it took almost half the time. So this is an example how easy the batch request can help you improving the performance of your flow plus it will also going to allow you to combine different type of request. This will definitely help you to improve the performance of your flow. Yeah, that's it. And thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.